Right, I'll start. So my name is uh, Becky Abberton. I um, live in West Lancashire. Um, um, I live in a uh, little village kind of called Bursco, which is between um, Preston and Liverpool, kind of in the middle. Um, I've been painting probably for about the past three years, and I'm in my second year of my MA. Um, I took, I was, um, for about 15 years, I worked as an arts officer for Prescat in Preston. And then I've set up my kind of own small arts, um, unincorporated association, which is a participatory and community kind of um, small arts organization. And we work primarily in Preston, but I'm just gonna talk about my work really, not my kind of work, my participatory work. Um, so I kind of started off and this is kind of like, um, if anybody wants to say anything midway, they're quite welcome to. Okay, so um, this is, um, I was looking at, these are my very early paintings that I did. And it's, um, yeah, so it's kind of about storytelling. I wanted to look at like, um, in the landscape, I kind of like, you know, the natural world, but I don't want to just kind of, kind of paint it abstract or I don't want to just paint it kind of life, you know, like a drawing from an observation of the outside world. It's kind of like I want to kind of have a storytelling, um, just to kind of to tell a story. So this is kind of, this is called The Egret in the Moon. And it's, I mean, I'm inspired looking at, I was looking at Leonora Carrington and it connecting with kind of like the fantasy side of kind of like our natural landscape. And this is the Egret in the Moon. And I was looking at mythologies and storytelling and I was kind of couldn't really find anything. So this is kind of made up my own mythology about the moon and the kind of caring element of the moon. Um, and I've got a lot of the moths kind of coming towards the moon. And I've also got like um, looking at um, like the moon flowers which also like morning glory. Um, I kind of looked at the, uh, the Turkish evil eye beads, which are in the kind of feathers and that's to protect from illness and also to bring good luck. Okay, so kind of the same. I'm moving this, I'm moving into my kind of another early painting and this is called um, Crow Girl. And I was looking at Leonore Carrington's work and she talks about mask and um, kind of like um, a lot of young women kind of have to behave in a certain way and it's kind of like you wear a mask and a thing and it's kind of underneath it all it's kind of like the beast within as she calls it so it's kind of like you're identifying with nature and the, the mythology of nature and um, being part of nature Okay, so for moving on to my next painting. These two are kind of another of my early paintings. And I was kind of, uh, kind of, I was thinking about how we as humans always think we know animals. Uh, and I think we just, we don't really look at animals properly. And I, I kind of, I was at um, Windsor Great Park and the painting to the left, this one, which is uh, Look at My Beautiful Self. I saw this swan and it was just looking in the water and I took a photograph and I was thinking, why is that swan looking in the water? There's loads of people around it kind of feeding it bread and and it had not, was not taking any notice and all it was, was actually doing was looking at its own reflection. And I was thinking, well, why was the swan looking at its own reflection? So it's kind of, I was just thinking that we don't actually really know animals that well. It just kind of sparked me off. And then on the right side, this is another painting and it's called a Chrysalis. And a lot of people kind of think it's just a dead woodpecker, but it's not, it's kind of, I was trying to get, um, seeing how um, birds are kind of a life force and part of nature. So if you're linking it, it's linking up with all the other flowers in the picture. So they're kind of my very kind of earlier paintings. So moving into, this is um, called Everything. And I'm just kind of telling, telling the story of summer. Um, I kind of look back at these paintings and think it's a bit naive, but 
it's also it's kind of like it, it represents kind of summer to me so i had like the lilacs at the bottom and this um the swallows and the martins all flying around and also like the the blue tits at the top and i kind of i wanted kind of like having a a pique at the front it was like um japanese flowers that I had at the front um Okay, so moving on again. So this is kind of going back to my Leonora Carrington about the, the beast within and I was kind of evoking some kind of kind of feeling of frustration and escape and in this painting. Um, okay, so kind of, I'm moving to my kind of, kind of painted that have more mythology and kind of thinking behind them. And the first one is a force of nature, which is the, the girl with the flowers on her head on the left hand side. And it was kind of looking in nature and thinking of like gods and mythologies within nature. And I, and I kind of came up with um, the green man. And um, because I'm female and I like, you know, I want to respond to nature in a female way, I kind of were looking at it. It's it again, I was like, what, what mythologies are out there with women in nature? So I kind of made this one up. And uh, my daughter was reading a, a Terry Pratchett um, book at the time. And it was, um, I think it was a wintersmith. And uh, Tiffany, which is a character, was dancing with um, the wintersmith. And she shouldn't have been. Uh, the summer lady should have danced with the wintersmith, which turns winter into spring into summer. So Tiffany, every time she put her foot onto the floor, life would spurt up from her feet because she was bringing forth a kind of nature and spring. So this is this painting is my daughter's face, and it's kind of um, I've got the larks flying around her head, and she's holding a hand, and within that's kind of symbolism of, of life and death, and kind of like the symbols of um, you know like the winter, summer, spring. Okay, so on to the left hand side, this is kind of when I kind of get a bit more into kind of mythology here. And I was kind of drawn, and this one's called the Harpy. And it's um, a kind of an exploration of a painting based on the Harpy or Anne Lilith. Um, I'll skip the I'll explain those characters, but the painting's actually called the Harpy. So I was trying to make a powerful god-like figure and have power over the, the natural world, the giver of life and death. So I was looking at um, Lilith um, in mythology. It's kind of Jewish mythology. Um, she's often shown as a dangerous woman of the night who's sexually wanton. And the Harpy is from, I'm sorry, the Lilith, um, in Jew Jewish folklore, she appears as Adam's first wife, and um, she was made of the same clay as Adam. But she kind of um, left the Garden of Eden and uh, refused to be subservient towards Adam. Um, so, and then the, the, the harpy is from the Greek and Roman mythology, described as a rapturous monster, described as a, having a woman's head in the body of a bird. Um, so this is a painting, it's kind of, I was trying to make a quite a powerful painting. So she's kind of like uh, flanked by cormorants and uh, she kind of makes the sea boil with her, the fish. Um, there's somebody, um, I'm going to read a bit of poetry. So somebody um, um, knew it more, she wrote a poem. So this is kind of my listening to this poem is kind of based on the storytelling. So him to Lilith, she breathes, she is the breath of the desert and of the sea. She is the bitter earth, mirth, root and shadow. She is the salt of the Red Sea in the shifting sands of the primary, primordial menstrual earth, ancient cycle of death and birth. She is the first cry of ecstasy and the first howl of loss. She is the flight and fire, both bright and fecund light. She was born in the first beat of the drum, the moan and rhythmical hum 
Tis the blood offering to beast and seed, and the keening reed, the wind. Tis the darkest night and the sheer sight flight, the air, the ascent, and the scent of women tangled with heat. Tis the eternal raging bittersweet. So that's my kind of, that is the harpy that's kind of, I've visually kind of brought that poem to life there. Okay, I hope I'm not confusing you all. So this one here, I was asked, um, I had an exhibition and uh, Three Left Feet, it's a theatre company in Lancaster, asked me to do a painting for them based on uh, A Midsummer's Night's Dream. So this one's called Titania, so she's the queen of the fairies. So when I looked at it, I was talking to them and they said they wanted to kind of have a, a link with uh, Pendle Hit Witch Trials. And I was kind of thinking, well, how would, um, you know, uh, the Queen of the Fairies link into the Pendle Witch Trials? And it's kind of like that um, female um, kind of uh, strength or the strength that women get from the natural world. So I was thinking, well, yeah, so I kind of went to, I think it's Rugeley in Nelson, and there's a picture of Alice Nutter. Well, there's a statue of Alice Nutter. So I went to Rugeley and took some photographs of Alice Nutter. And then I kind of um, brought the two together. So you've got this picture of Alice Nutter with her kind of shackles on as a pendle witch. And then you have her great kind of wings and her familiars around her as well. So it's kind of like bringing the two together. So the kind of natural, and she's also all the flowers in her dress are kind of like um, herbal flowers used in remedies and things. So it's kind of, kind of thought of, I'll um, kind of put it, so kind of like I wrote myself a poem about her as well. So I'll read that poem to you. So it kind of makes more sense of the painting as well, I think. So this is Titania. Look at me, woman is my crime. History against me, genocide wipes clean. Made into fiction, a fairy tale, which they shout in fear. Fear me, I roar. Shackled and taken from my home, as hundreds did. What do you fear? The devil, you say. You fear my knowledge, our mater matriarchy. So you murdered me and wiped it clean. So it's kind of like the, the fairy tales around are quite a, quite a horrific happening that happened. That we just have the kind of handle witches and we think of witches, but there's actually a quite horrible history behind it all. Okay, so moving on to my kind of on the right hand side, yeah, is um, this is the Valkyrie. So I was kind of looking at mythology a bit more. And I kind of went to, um, into the North mythology. And this is North mythology of Valkyries. Now, Valkyries are women who um, fly between worlds, and uh, world and heaven, and they take the fallen to Valhalla. So you go to the great Norse god Odin. Um, so that's, that this is quite a strong mythology, a female mythology. But as I kind of read a bit more into it, because quite a lot of mythology is kind of, kind of weakened. Female mythology is quite weakened. The stories get kind of retold. And it kind of go to the, the story of Brunhild or Brunhilda, who was a Valkyrie. And she, kind of, she, kind of, she became kind of a, a, a mortal woman. And she kind of first off from this kind of powerful Valkyrie, she was kind of just somebody's um, kind of daughter and then somebody's wife and I just kind of wanted to depict the kind of the fall of the Valkyrie in kind of in mythology so they suddenly just become all this power and strength and they just kind of become um, kind of quite um, mortal women and even less kind of women with, without a voice at all so I kind of wrote another poem so this is a poem, um, circle high, light and free, below cries of valour and victory. R worshippers, relentlessly move through worlds, sinew, hair, teeth and feather, 
givers of life or death, worshippers. Words and stories rip and tear are female forms laid bare, worshippers. We shrivel and fade, weak and abused, worshippers. Our female powers diminished and we fall into the world of men, worshippers. So they're kind of the mythology is quite hard to heavy those um, my kind of stories, but they kind of kind of the kind of wants is kind of a strength of, in the paintings as well. Now the Valkyrie, I want to do kind of a triptych, but this is the first of the triptych. So well, I've got two more paintings for the trip to do to so the fall of the Valkyries. Okay, so now. I'm moving into amphitrite. Now amphitrite, oh. So amphitrite is the painting on the left and uh, she is, um, amphitrite is married to Poseidon or Neptune, but she also, as I've read different kind of mythologies, she actually is the sea itself and um, so I think some of the stories kind of Poseidon sent his um, narwhal out to kind of seduce her. So in this painting, I've kind of looked at the female strength of Amphitrite and she's kind of represents the sea and the woman in the sea and she's holding her, her trident. So, and and um, I kind of try to bring it into mo and the modern day scenario. So she's kind of surrounded by plastic in the sea. So it's kind of like her sea has been kind of damaged by humans, really. So it's got all the plastic and she's coming forth with her trident and she's bringing forth the rain. So you see, she's got this huge headdress on and she's bringing forth the rain and she's bringing forth her, um, her rain birds to bring forth a, a monsoon. So it's quite a, my own kind of mythology, but, but based on a, an older mythology. Okay, so on to the, the left side. This is another kind of mythology I was looking into as well, called the Swan Maidens. And they're myth myth mythological creatures who shapeshift. So the kind of women who shapeshift into swans, and they are from a Germanic uh, legend. Um, I've kind of put these, so if you look, there's a woman in, in, in the swan, and then it's kind of... Um, there's a ball and chain and then there's a lot of money and I was kind of looking at kind of money around women and selling clothes and selling shoes and kind of the entrapment of all this kind of stuff and people making money about uh, kind of women changing makeup and there's also like a lot of plastic surgery that you see at the moment I don't, yeah so it's kind of all that kind of like you kind of fall into the trap and the so going back to the swan maid and the actual mythology of the swan maiden is the um, the swans kind of come down and they get they, they swim as women in the pools and um, uh, at one time um, a young man was watching the the women and he took one of the swan suits away so then the, the swan maiden became his wife and and bared him children so that's the kind of uh, the story of the swan maiden but I've kind of have changed it a bit and kind of have my own spin on it there. Okay. Okay, so these are kind of four little uh, paintings that I've done. Kind of looking back at the mythology of what I've kind of um, just been uh, talking about. The top left is Lilith um, and she has, I don't think you can see the snake because she's supposed to be um part you know she she kind of represent is represented quite often as the snake in the garden of eden because she's it came in some stories came back as a snake so she kind of represents this kind of e e evil side and she's also kind of um the taker of life and the get you know i put that kind of life circle into that so that's on the right. And on the left side, we've got Celine, who is actually the, the, the god of the, the moon. And here she's got her um, morning glory around her face, which is the moon flowers and the moons, the moths all kind of coming to worship her. 
And then the lower one I've got, you know, looking back at Leonor Carrington and the beast within, it's kind of like the, the natural thing beneath the mask in this bottom left. And then on the other side is, I did a, a let's have a look. The, the, this one's a mischief for the bottom right. Yeah, um, it's mischief of the deity. So I was looking at, uh, I did a, a commission for the Harris Library in Preston, and it was looking at Richard Dad painting of Puck. And I was thinking, what female um, characters is similar to Puck? And it's, I found 80 who is the Greek goddess of mischief, delusion, ruin, and folly. So she leads heroes into death and downfall. So it's kind of like that monstrous women that I kind of looked at it, the, the harpy. So it's kind of, but I've done here as, a, as a mischief, it's kind of a mischief I want to put into this painting really. So the swallow is kind of quickness of thought. And then we, we have the kind of, um, the lizard has been a bit kind of wily. Okay. So this is, I kind of gone off my own mythology and kind of went into my, this is my kind of um, coronavirus painting with weird um, thinking. But I just couldn't read, it, it was a lot of, it's on, um, on my mind a lot at the moment, as it was everybody. And it's called The Death of Austerity, this painting. So it kind of like the top, it's kind of, I wanted to do fragmented paintings as well. So looking at all the, my other paintings, I was kind of thinking, well, how can I explain my paintings in different ways instead of just a straight canvas? So it's kind of kind of thinking of how to fragment it. So I was, as an explorative painting, but it's kind of based on the death of austerity. So it's kind of looking at how um, suddenly austerity is over and it kind of came with COVID. Suddenly, you know, all these people were suffering. There's a lot of homeless people on the streets that I was aware of and children suffering. And it all kind of, suddenly COVID's here and it's a horrible thing. The government just seems to be throwing money out. So I was just thinking, where, where's all this money coming from? So I was kind of like putting the faded smile into the Joker's face. And then I've got the kind of, uh, the lungs um, of, of COVID. It's kind of attacking them. So because I right early March I had a really bad chest infection so it's kind of it brought all my brought my attention to being ill and so I just spent all my time outside in the garden trying to get fresh air and it's kind of like all oh, like um all this kind of beautiful growth and flowers are out and the birds are wild and we've got a lot of buzzards around here and, and sparrow hawks so I kind of was trying to put all this all in together and I've got a lot of sparrows within the lungs and I had the sparrow hawks outside the lungs so it's kind of like we suddenly became the prey to a predator a frightening predator so that's kind of my COVID painting okay so moving on oh. with all my kind of mythology and mythological women that I kind of explaining earlier I kind of was making kind of headdresses that I thought would be um, fantastic to do, and I really enjoyed making them. So this is Titania. So this is based on the Pendle Witch uh, and um, uh, Titania, um, Queen of Fairies, Shakespeare. So this is her hat, and she's kind of like have, you know, it's quite a natural kind of uh, a natural bird. So it's the bird and the nest and the egg. So moving into the next one, the Valkyrie headdresses. These are all made out of tissue paper and glue, PVA glue. And I've based them on a, um, gate, a skated helmet, those kind of round ones. So these are my, Val my Valkyrie headdresses. And then this is um, my harpy headdress as well. So she's kind of got a plume of peacock plume. With these as well, I kind of wanted to kind of um, put my poems and people could wear the headdress and, as, and say my poems. I kind of wanted to make my paintings and the my headdresses into a kind of performance really. So yeah, I was kind of just over the summer as well, I managed to get away 
and this one is Di uh, Diana. Um, let's have a look. She's the Greek goddess of wild animals and the hunt. So kind of really like the statue that I saw in Scotland. I managed to get up to Scotland for a week. And I really kind of happened upon this sculpture, which was really nice. And then the middle one, this is um, Lilith, uh, and she's in the Atkinson Gallery in Southport. A big, nice big painting. So I've kind of, I've kind of done, painted Lilith twice, but kind of I would like to explore that, and I'd like to, as with my um, the Death of Austerity painting, I wanted to kind of have a fragmented image. And then I'm right sorry on. to interrupt you, Flo, Becky, but um, it's going to kick us out. So, um, okay. so if we I've can all sign back on. on. All right, and then we'll sign back in. So go. <laughs> um, okay, and so this last one is um, the legend of the Coca Can or something. It's. A... I'm just going to press record again. I don't know if you wanted to say anything else. Um, I think you, you were so close to the end of your presentation where we got cut off, didn't we? <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to say anything else, and then um, it'd be great to open up to questions if you're up for that. Yeah, no, that's fine. No, I'm fine. I think I just came to the end. It was just that last uh, picture was um, the seal woman coming out of the of the ocean at the Faroe Islands. I really like that image. That was it, really. Oh, thanks so much. That, that was that was a really great presentation. Um, and as you were starting to talk about like the first slides, I thought immediately these would be brilliant with poetry alongside them and then you said <laughs> 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 so that was really great and, and that was like basically my main question <laughs> and um how like how beautiful uh, have you ever made books before how beautiful these would be as like book illustrations and in, in a yeah. no i haven't no not, no not at all yeah, I think that it'd be fantastic published as a book, especially alongside the poetry as well. Yeah. Yeah. Does um, anybody have no. any other questions for, for Becky? I think Hansa, you wanted to ask about the surrealism aspect. I think. I think um, um, Becky sort of forgot to mention. I read from. Oh. Um, am I there? Am I there? Yeah. Yeah. Am I here? I've messed it up. I've messed it up everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was just thinking like from what I read about. Can you hear me? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Can you hear me? Gone again. I, I, can, I can see and hear you, Hansa. I don't know if anybody else has got... Um, I don't know. I can, am I here? Am I here? Here I am! <laughs> I was just going to say, Becky, from the material I read online, um, you said that it was you drew influences from surrealism and that you used mystical imagery. I don't know if you still feel that true to your work or not. I think so. Kind of like um, kind of stories and mythology. So not as much as surrealist influence, then more the mythological side than the Greek yeah, I wouldn't, I don't, mythology. Yeah, I wouldn't say... Um, well surrealist yeah kind of um i have been my paintings have been called surrealist because they're kind of um they're telling a story they're kind of uh, kind of not total observations of the outside world are they and, and i think it's uh, what other people have said my paintings are surrealist kind of looking i just thought to myself i pondered um because i was really into surrealism in my teens and then I sort of got kind of told not to be because they tend to be quite misogynistic. Dolly and Disney both were quite patriarch, you know, like the the woman suited their needs. And then I just thought, well, have you sort of found a lead figure in that kind of movement that isn't? Well, it's, um, well you've got Leonora, Leonora Carrington would say she was quite surrealist, you know, mm. along that ilk, I think. Okay. Thank you. That's okay. Any anybody else? Any questions? Uh, yes, I have a question. How do you start off with your like initial idea? Um, I'm just yeah, I kind of like um, 
I kind of like read a lot of kind of um, mythology and a lot of my kind of like um, kind of my tutors have uh, pulled me in certain ways and and I've kind of um, I know my, my dad was very into mythology so I've always had like Greek mythology and stuff about um, the house when I was younger so it's kind of and just different ways of like looking at things and different, yeah. I think that's probably where I get it from. And then I kind of um, also just wandering about, I get my own little stories of things, I think, which just pop into my head. But quite often I just kind of research, um, I'm just trying to think back. Yeah, no, it's just, and also going to like, uh, that, that Lilith is in um, self the Atkinson and then just looking at, you know, it just came across uh, the legend of the seal women and that was on an Instagram post um, the fantastic uh, sculpture in the Faroe Island so it's just kind of just every day looking at the internet, looking at different things and probably things that I'm interested in, you know, and I follow things to find out more about it I think. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 